But I believe the amount of damage being done to Coloradans in the form of addiction, driving problems, other social ills, will cost that state far more than it's taking in. I am not a fan of cannabis. I am not going to be the governor who is going to tell our children and our young adults that marijuana use is okay, because it's not. With all the animosity and dogma surrounding the cannabis industry, we decided to perform our own due diligence on the perplexing topic and share our findings in this documentary. Over time, we became so intrigued by the claims about the miraculous benefits of cannabis that we read everything we could online about medical marijuana. We felt like the discoverer of a new world already fully inhabited and thriving, but totally unknown to the rest of us. In the United States, states around the country, more than 23 in total have legalized medical marijuana. Experts have been changing their minds, too. Recently, CNN's chief medical correspondent, Sanjay Gupta, reversed his opinion on medical marijuana. I think, you know, we've been terribly and systematically misled in this country for some time, and I, I, was, I did part of that misleading. While recreational pot usage is controversial, many people agree with Gupta's new stance and believe that the drug should be legal for medical uses. And even though the benefits of smoking pot may be overstated by advocates of marijuana legalization, new laws will help researchers study the drug's medicinal uses and better understand how it impacts the body. As we continue to perform our research, we were lucky enough to stumble upon an outfit by the name of First Harvest Financial, located in the United States of America. First Harvest Financial Inc. is based out of Tampa, Florida, and works directly with those professionals looking to strategically enter and capitalize on growing and creating therapeutic, cannabis-based solutions in today's marketplace. We booked our appointment and set out to uncover the truth about medical marijuana. The firm provides a platform for legal cannabis startups to interact with corporate executives, serial entrepreneurs, and technology accelerators. Well, First Harvest is a private equity firm that invests in ancillary medical cannabis-related companies. We're primarily made up of over 20 investment advisors that have collectively raised, managed, and advised in excess of $475 million. But, you know, what's really unique about the First Harvest family is most of the entire team has either worked side by side or we've at least been familiar with each other for the last 20 years, and we all have some type of health story whether it's a family member, a loved one, someone we care dearly about that could have had improved health if medical cannabis were fully legalized. In creating this documentary, we felt the public needs to be aware of the facts about marijuana so that it can dismiss fictions about the drug's effects. Well, the thing that got me interested in the space was that um, I saw videos of these, these children. You know, they would have about 20, 30, 40 seizures a day. And when you look at the faces of these kids, you can just auto I mean it just tugs at your heartstrings you can tell they have no real true quality of life even at that age because they're suffering and you look at their faces and then when you see more and more scientific proof that cannabidiol which is the non psychoactive component of the plant is giving these kids this quality of life five six seven months after treatment they haven't had one seizure there's something special going on only by knowing when marijuana presents a real threat and when the risk is minimal can people properly weigh its dangers and benefits in specific situations. Both our health and sound social policy depend on it. I feel that the politicians in this country aren't doing enough right now and they need to be educated as to the profound effects that medical marijuana has patients these days. The global situation in the medical marijuana space is growing. There are many countries now that are coming online with medical marijuana. The United States uh, unfortunately trails a lot of these countries in our progress. Cannabis is a great example of how the human mind can contain conditioning to believe something. You know, in many ways, history seems to be repeating itself, but with a twist. It was the first mover entrepreneurs and angel investors in the 30s that harvested generational wealth creation via prohibition repeal. And of course, they face similar stigma and risks, the same ones that today's entrepreneurs and angel investors had. But being in an industry uh, that you're the first mover does have distinct advantages. And since the cannabis industry is already a $50 billion a year underground industry, 
That's exiting the shadows, coming into the light. This industry seems to be destined to repeat the historical boom of the prohibition repeal. But here's the twist. Medical cannabis is just that. It's medicine. A medicine that's already enabling thousands of known patients to live more economically productive and enjoyable lives. Growing up, we are told drugs are bad, which is very true. However, not all substances that have been labeled as drugs by the varying authoritative bodies are harmful. It's possible substances are labeled as a drug in order to protect corporate interests. The truth is that medical cannabis is competition to the pharmaceutical industry, as the cannabis plant can take the place of a wide variety of synthetic drugs, especially for mood and anxiety disorders. Something, something about the industry that, uh, that a lot of people don't fully understand is how it kind of evolved into different sectors, such as the ancillary business sector, very similar to the Gold Rush, which was started in 1846. And a year later, the masses moved out to California to participate. So that's kind of the situation where we're at today. Today we have a green rush and people are trying to come in and participate. And we feel like we're a first mover to the space. Of course, as you probably can tell by now, there's a potential to create great value and wealth in the space, but that's not really what drives the First Harvest team. What really drives a First Harvest team is compassion. You know, we see an opportunity to kind of repurpose our skill sets in a manner that beyond capitalism could actually improve the quality of life for millions of patients that otherwise they couldn't succeed on their own. What I feel in the next two to three years, as regulations get lifted, I think there's going to be 20 to 30 companies trading on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, that are cannabis related. We want to make sure that there's good companies out there who are following good testing to make sure the efficacy of the drug is good. I mean, it's been used for thousands of years. It's been used medicinally. It's been used ceremonially. It's been used industrially. It has tremendous uses. And we think as this industry grows, it can then be used for those good purposes. Is it possible that medical cannabis could be the most useful remedy to treat the widest variety of human diseases and conditions, a component of preventative healthcare, and an adaptive support in our increasingly toxic, carcinogenic environment? After conducting our own research and interviewing the team at First Harvest Financial, the answer was a resounding yes. This was well known to the indigenous medical systems of ancient India, China and Tibet, and as demonstrated in this documentary, is becoming increasingly well known by Western science. There's a significant amount of dogma that oversaturates the medical cannabis space. And one of the challenges is being able to find great content, whether it's online or offline. But that's why we've decided to develop great strategic partnerships with some alliances across the web and across the publishing sector. Of course, we need more human-based research studying the effectiveness of cannabis but the evidence base is already large and growing constantly. Despite the two largest U.S. physician associations, American Medical Association and American College of Physicians, calling for more research, the U.S. Congress prohibiting federal interference in states' medical cannabis programs, a 5,000-year history of safe therapeutic use, and a huge amount of published research, most doctors know little or nothing about medical cannabis. Most potential growth in the industry is undoubtedly from the medicinal uh, value that the plant offers. Uh, cancer, Crohn's disease, chronic pain, autism, uh, epilepsy, these are all diseases in which scientific uh, and anecdotal evidence is coming forth every single day showing the value of the plant in healing. The most significant scientific research to come out uh, on cannabis related medicines has got to be related to cancer treatment and its potential is, is quite huge. We, we barely even scratched the surface because it's been so hard to do any research. But the limited research that has come on down, uh, which has been done in the laboratory, and it's been done with animal models and just small, small groups of humans uh, outside this country, has shown a huge impact of uh, both CBD and THC on killing tumors, both cancerous and non-cancerous tumor cells. The biggest impact that we're having right now with, with medical marijuana has been with getting people off of uh, opioids. As, as I think we all know, there's an epidemic going on. I believe it's about 11,000 people die a year from opioid overdoses, from prescribed medicines that their doctors gave them that they have overdosed on and died. The FDA has severely limited uh, research for the past 40 years since the start of the war on drugs. And so it has placed uh, cannabis as a Schedule One drug. 
which means there's no medical use and it's a very addictive drug. And so they will, there's no funding for anything because there's no medical use. So these new companies uh, that are funding research and funding growth so they can do their own research are vital to the next phase of medical marijuana. Does your doctor understand the benefit of medical cannabis? Can he or she advise you in the proper indications, dosage and route of administration? Likely not. As we witnessed in the United States, this is changing, in part because the public is demanding it. We all want safe, natural and inexpensive treatments that stimulate our body's ability to self-heal and help our population improve its quality of life. And that's why we concluded that medical cannabis is indeed a solution with miraculous benefits.